Hello everybody and welcome to my blog again this month. Um, welcome back, uh, thank you for coming back. Today I am joined by teacher, actress, director and Shakespeare extraordinaire Pat O'Toole who is my course director at Bruford. Hello Pat. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm very excited about the Shakespeare extraordinaire. I'm not <laughs> too sure I'm a Shakespeare extraordinaire but well... I'll, I'll take the others. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you lots and lots of questions about Shakespeare. No I'm not. <laughs> yeah, please don't. Okay well what I thought we would do because um, I've never interviewed anybody before I thought that we would start off with a lightning round yeah super super speedy yeah one word answers first thing that pops into your head as long as it's not rude well <laughs> right okay cool, go for I'll it i try not to be rude okay yeah full name pat o'toole job title course director hidden talent mosaic maker signature drink uh vodka soda water with a lot of lime and ice occupation you would never want to attempt uh, anything to do with IT or programming. Play that changed your life. Oh, Too Clever by Half. Playwright that changed your life. Um, probably earlier on Moira Buffini. Okay, cool. Tell us a secret. Uh, does this have to be clean? No. No, but I can't say this because everyone will know. <laughs> yes, they will. Okay, now I can't tell you that one. You can. No, I can't. You can tell us anything, Pat. I, 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 this no, is only it, the beginning. It's, it's a bodily. It's a body thing. Do it. No, no, I can't. Thousands of people will know this. All right, secret, secret, secret. Um, uh, I once went. No, I can't say that either. Can <laughs> can I go past this one because they're all rude? They're okay. all rude. Okay, tell us a lie. A lie. Oh, um, I um, actually got an A for my maths, considering I'm illiterate. Well done, you. Um, Favourite swear word? Um, bollocks. Good one. Title of your autobiography? This moment. Okay, cool. Theme tune of your life. This is quick fire, Pat. Oh, yeah, but I've never <laughs> thought about these before. <laughs> They're interesting. Uh, theme tune. What was the MASH theme tune? I can't remember what it is, but I think it was that. Okay, well, Google it. Yeah. Everybody Google MASH it. MASH theme tune. Comment it. Yeah. A book that changed your life. Oh. Realise this would be so difficult. <laughs> not difficult no, it really all. is hard for me because okay. I don't have these kind of things. Now I'm going to pass. I don't have a book okay. that changed my life. Song currently most played on your iPod? Um, uh, nine, the musical. Cool, that whole album. That the whole, whole thing, yeah. Good in a very unusual way, in particular. Okay, that cool. song. Check it out, everybody. Starbucks order. Oh, um,. Well, on a good day, soya decaf latte, but on a bad day, just regular, really strong coffee. Good stuff. And finally, acting, teaching or directing? Oh, uh, I would say, actually, can I pick another one? Of course you can. Uh, I would say facilitating. Okay. I prefer to go for facilitating. Talk to me than... about facilitating. Okay. Uh, increasingly, I think I'm less of a t teacher and more of a facilitator of other people's brilliance. Cool. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm slightly uncomfortable about the idea that I impart knowledge to people. I think, I think I'm more interested in, in getting people to be fabulous and reach their own potential. So acting, definitely not. I, I, I loved it when I was one, not. Directing, I absolutely love. But increasingly, uh, don't worry, that's the phone. Because we're in a very busy office. <laughs> we're very important in here. And that's you why can the answer phone's it, ring. Colin, if you want. And uh, Col I, I, Colin, I, I, Colin's I, I, here. I'm only pretending to not answer it because oh, it's you're not actually an our extension. I'm actually seat. not answering it because I don't answer my phone Fun. unless I absolutely <laughs> have to. Uh, okay. So, facilitator. Okay, good I'm going to take that one. Uh, you, you can have that. Okay, cool. So, I asked lots of people for questions about you, and one of the major ones that came up was, yeah. "What do audition panels look for?" Oh. All right. Uh, tricky because you're asking me to do something which is very actually subjective. Yes. 
I think people tend to look for the thing that they are they're, they're driven to see uh, and I think each individual person will look for a specific thing mm -hmm. but if you're talking about um, if you're talking about drama school auditions yeah. yes specifically yes. not for, for jobs um, drama school auditions I look for ability uh, to play I look for openness and I look for an imaginative engagement in an idea or a thought or an emotion or a character's, uh, character's reality. I look, I look for that, me personally. I think other people, if I was a movement teacher, I'd be looking for uh, a sense of release and, and how usable the body is. If I was a voice teacher, I'd probably be listening to something. So I think everyone looks for something different, but for me, those are the most important things. Cool. Okay, good mm. stuff. So how old were you when you first started to be interested in theatre and acting and uh, directing and that kind of thing? And how did that evolve for you? Where did that come from? Ah, uh, all my life, since the beginning, because my parents uh, were, were and are, were and are uh, uh, actors. So I was brought up with theatre and film and TV. So all my life I've been immersed with uh, with theatre and film and also surrounded by actors. So all my life is the answer. Um, how it worked for me was I was uh, actually not very sure um, but uh, it evolved for me by dipping my toe in. I was a stage manager initially. Cool. I worked as a, in the old days, we had things <laughs> called ASMs, which how old days. I am. Well, early 80s, um, we, we, you were employed to do multiple roles. So I was employed as an acting ASM understudy, which basically meant I had two, two lines and I got to do all the stage management ASM roles. And I've just got to do that. And that was a fantastic background for me. But I then sort of spent two and a half years being almost a career stage manager. So I uh, stage managed on tour. And then I worked my way up and I was a show caller in the West End, so DSM. So I did that. But then I realised that although I was really good at it, I didn't think that that was, I didn't think that was quite my thing. It felt like there was something missing, possibly something about the kind of creative process. Uh, so... I was encouraged uh, by some actors in the company who thought I was quite good to apply for drama school. Okay, where did you go? I initially went to Webber Douglas when it was Webber Douglas, mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately I kept throwing up the minute I walked through the front door, so that wasn't a good thing. Uh, that was basically a basic warning sign that it was not meant to be. I did the summer school and I got accepted. Okay. And uh, Summer school's a really good thing, by the way. Short courses and summer school's really good. Foundation uh, courses. Yeah, yeah, and foundation courses, just so you know whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. So I liked it, but then I got offered on the course. I walked into the building and I just felt nauseous. I just couldn't stay. So I was very fortunate that one of the teachers also taught in another programme and said, look, I don't think this is for you. How about you come and audition for this other drama school? And I did. So I went to Arts Ed for three years. Cool. In the Barbican, which was very good. And then I sort of evolved from there. But I started directing in my final year at drama school. So I, I, I was already directing and teaching and acting right from the word go, from the moment I left school. So I had three kind of paths running from then onwards and it was only a matter of time really. I loved acting, loved it, but it was only a matter of time for directing, teaching, working with people became the thing for me. Okay. And is there a particular role or play or production that you want to do that you haven't yet done or that you did and you aren't quite finished with that is the next big thing for you to try hmm. something that you want to do before you die you know yeah a piece right. that you have to do um i've definitely got a lot more directing things i'd like to do um i really i love directing and i haven't done a great deal in the last few years because i've done other stuff so i i think there's a lot of that sort of stuff i would really like to do uh, there's lots of genres of plays I'd like to do. I used to direct quite a lot of musicals and I'd really quite like to get back into that. Cool. So yeah, I think directing more than anything else. I think I'd like to do more of that maybe a bit later. OK. 
Okay, mm. awesome. And when you were uh, either on stage or ad- a directing stuff, was mm. there a pre-show ritual? Were there nerves? Is there something that you've kind of now got as like a habit that you do before you go on stage or before you work at all? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as an actor, definitely. I was very, 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 very disciplined in terms of because I was, you know, taught that you had to be in terms of my routine. I would get into the theatre at six, always. I'd always potter about and say hello to everyone. I would be on stage warming up at half six, you know, religiously, mm. regardless of whatever anyone else was doing. Uh, I'd do it for, you know, 20, 25 minutes till the half. You know, I mean, I had a ritual. So six, I'd put my curlers in because I always seem to be in period plays all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the heated rollers would be in at six and then I'd go out on stage and then warm up. So, yeah, I had a really... <laughs> and I was very, I was very, um, you know, my dressing room, I liked my dressing room to be a certain way. I liked stuff to be laid out in a certain way. And um, sometimes you share dressing with people who maybe don't, haven't quite got the same sort of aesthetic values as you do <laughs> so I've, I've shared dressing rooms with quite a few of those okay so cool. um yeah so yeah definitely I've definitely got got routines for things that I do and yeah of course nerves are you know inevitable inevitable but you learn how to deal with them as you get older they don't go away ever but you learn you have kind of strategies to help with them Cool. Okay. Mm. Awesome. Uh, there's no method in these questions at all. It's just like I'm still a thinking about collection. about the thing about myself that I can actually tell you a secret. Yeah, I'm going to end on that. So yeah. oh. you need to have one no, by no, the, the end the, of the interview. The, the thing about myself that no one. No, I, yeah, I'm still thinking about that as you're <laughs> asking me every single question. Sorry. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, have you ever considered yeah, considered leaving the industry? Oh. Uh, well, yeah, no, I guess I had a, I had a bit of a, uh, what I call a meander in my 30s because I retrained, I went back to university and I retrained and did psychology and I did a master's in counselling psychology and social sciences. So I had a, a bit of a div- diversion there. I thought that that could possibly take me in a different direction. And I was really open to the idea of that because... I realised very early on that the thing I loved about acting was actually understanding how people, human beings are, how they think and what drives them and what motivates them. So it was a very short walk f- for from that to psychology for me and working with people in a, in a more therapeutic context. So I thought that might take me off in a different direction, but actually it took me off in a different direction, but it actually brought me all the way back round again. So I, I kind of realized that I would really miss not having anything to do with acting or theatre or, cause I, you know, I love it. It's been mm. part of my life. Absolutely. But I, 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 I do both now. I do all of them because I'm really greedy. <laughs> And I like to have it all. And you're magnificent at them all. Oh, bless you. That's nice. If you... Okay, what does it say? If you could wake up fully trained, money, no object, in any career you ever wanted, and you could wake up fully trained and offered a job in it, what career would you choose? Wow. Honestly, Mm. without this sounding cheesy, exactly the one I've got. Yay! What a good answer. I wouldn't... I wouldn't change a thing. I really wouldn't, no. Good stuff. I like that. Yeah. Okay. What would your subject of expertise be on Mastermind? Oh, you see, I, this is a secret, isn't it? Okay. Is it? Uh, okay. It's not really, but I'm just pretending that I'm not actually, this isn't being recorded. Honestly, I'm, because I'm, um, um, I'm two, one of two things. I am a secret people pleaser. And also I have imposter syndrome, which really means basically that I wake up every day and I'm absolutely convinced that this is the day that I'm going to be found out, that I'm not really, really good at this and I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) So really the whole idea of that kind of, I really don't think I, I think I know a lot. I think I read a lot and I do a lot, but I don't ever feel I really know a lot. Which is why this whole me being a teacher thing doesn't okay. really work for me. It all fits into place. 
yeah I don't think that's my thing mainly because um, I, I, I have a huge problem with retaining information because that's how my dyslexia works I don't I, I can't I find it really difficult to keep facts and information in my head mm -hmm. they just disappear so that has caused a lot of anxiety over the years because I don't remember things so I get really scared when people ask me things like favorite Sorry. book favorite ever. <laughs> because not because I don't have them but because I couldn't honestly remember what they are yeah even though you know I've I've read loads of amazing things mm. I couldn't honestly remember the title of the book I read last week but I could tell you the story of it okay so that's kind of how it works for me so I don't have one <laughs> I don't have one I just I don't think I have a special subject because if you put me that would be my other nightmare you said my nightmare job yeah being put on a chair in a mastermind chair with the with the with the light quiz yes a bit like this because i have avoided <laughs> quizzes all my life trivial pursuit was my was my nemesis i absolutely hated it yeah so when i'm put on the spot because i can't remember things i so no I, okay. it would be my worst nightmare and would i would leave. i would refuse to go <laughs> good for you i would sit there and talk about other stuff but <laughs> i wouldn't be quizzed Excellent. Okay, cool. Talk to me about theatre and the power of theatre and why it's lasted so long, particularly in this country. <sighs> because it's about stories. I think theatre is storytelling. Um, and people, humans, are really endlessly intrigued and fascinated and need to feel a connection to other humans. And I think when we see really magnificent pieces of theatre, when we're all sitting there as a group en masse, I think that's the other thing is we don't sit singly. We are, you know, in a mass of people all together experiencing something in this moment, hence my autobiography, this moment. Ah, good link. I did well that. done. <laughs> um, I think that's magical. I think there's something extraordinary about that transference that happens when you are drawn into a story about another with another human and how their lives work. For me, that's that's the magic for me. Okay. I think that's a magical thing when it really works. When it's rubbish and it's you know, I don't believe any of it. That's the other, that's the hard thing about, I think, going to the theatre is I do get quite cross with okay. poor acting. So, yeah. Yeah, I that's, know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, you do, don't you? Well, uh, not not believable in the moment. You know, okay. do you just mean not connected yeah. up? I don't, you know, because you can see through that really fast. And I, I, have, I don't have an interest in that sort of theatre. I admire it. I think it's technical and very crafted and... I admire it and respect it. For me, it doesn't do anything. Mm. It doesn't change me in any way. I'm not moved by it. So therefore I tend to switch off. Okay. So, quite a little so what production have you seen either recently or over the years that really did that, that really nailed it and just that you've never forgotten? Oh, wow. Hmm. What have I seen? recently or in the past well do you know because only because you you asked me the first thing that really changed me lots of other things have since mm -hmm. but in the world of i can't recall anything um the too clever by half thing would i saw it when i was at drama school and it was the uh, the kind of the, the launching of a fabulous actor called alex jennings he was really young it was one of his big outings and I was at drama school and I'd never seen anything like it. I'd never seen anything that was so brave and so extraordinary and so visually uh, amazing. Uh, and that's, I, I learned a great deal because up to then I think I'd seen quite a lot of quite, you know, bulk, what I say box set theatre, mm. you know, sort of set pieces. But that started to really shake things up. I mean... Um, very brief, you know, there was a set that was on a one in something rake. So basically they couldn't get up to the top without the use of, of ropes. Uh, it was the most extraordinary thing. Linda Marlowe. You see, I remember the fact that I remember all the names of people in it. Yeah, absolutely. Says something to me because mm. I couldn't remember the thing I saw two weeks ago. So um, that really changed things for me because 
I thought that they were so brave. It completely blew me away. So that's really one that's stayed with me. I think maybe recently more film has stayed with me than okay. theatre. What films have stuck I've with seen you? loads. Um, what do I, I have love... to go and see? Oh, I went to see Joy. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I think she's really interesting as an actor. And I thought it was lovely. Again, I'm probably now more moved by film than I am by theatre. It's not oh, that it doesn't okay. do it, but... For me, I, I just am. I think it's just about the way everything works together. Okay. Um, so as a director, I've always been... The first thing I always think about is if I can't visualise the set, if I can't visualise the, the landscape, then I shouldn't do the play. You know, if I can't see it as I'm reading it, I shouldn't do it. So, you know, I've always, I've always kind of kept that in mind from the very first play I ever directed to now. Um, so the visual, then the second thing I always do is think about music. So if I can't find the music that I feel is the thing, okay. is the kind of key thing for the piece. Again, that's the first thing I look for. So yeah. do you know what I mean? It's a kind of a process of how you could produce and direct in theatre, that it was different. Cool. Would you ever make a film? Ooh, um, do you know what? No, I don't think so. Only because it's a really different skill set. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm, having been on a lot of film, I mean, I was on a film set a couple of weeks ago and, and having been on it just reminds me that although I can work my way around it as a coach, I, I, it's so complicated. Yeah. The mechanics, it's a different ball game. And actually, this is another secret, I can tell you the secret, is that actually as an actor, I hated television and film. And really why? I never thought I would. And that's probably one of the reasons I stopped doing it, because okay. I hated it so much. Why did you hate it? Because it was the most utterly terrifying, boring... Everything that I loved about theatre and rehearsing and the company and the... Do you know what I mean? The process mm. of rehearsing and the comradeship and the family and then the play and then recreating those live... Every day, that, that live... Mo those moments... A new thing every day it was really exciting but film and tv you just learn scripts and invariably don't ever rehearse and you get shipped in at five in the morning and you wait for eight hours in your caravan and then you just get out there and just do it you're lucky if you even meet the people you're working with um, and I didn't enjoy that experience I hated it I had some of the worst times ever filming to the point when I just thought, I, if my life as an actor is going to be about TV, I don't want to do it. So, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. You talked a little bit about um, uh, Jennifer Lawrence, um, who yeah. uh, I love personally yeah. um, as an uh, actress. Yeah. There is quite a debate going on at the moment online about the term actress yes. and whether people identify with it or kind of choose not to because it's weak or, you know, whatever. But then there is kind of a sense of, reclaiming it as being a good thing as opposed to female actors being identified as actors or actresses. What do you make of it all? I think I also got sucked in years ago into calling every started call everyone started to be called actors, mm. regardless of gender, because everyone just that was the parlance, you know, casting directors, breakdowns, agents, no one said actresses anymore. I don't know why it happened. I don't remember it happening, but I remember being part of that kind of almost that kind of collusion and you're absolutely right it started to go the other way mm. started calling actors as actors and actors actors again I think maybe because I think maybe because it was felt that actresses when you talk about being an actress somehow it seemed to have less authority or weight and than actor I don't know maybe it was something to do with that that if we're all just actors then we're on an even playing field because I'm afraid you're still going to find actresses don't get paid as much as their actor counterparts yeah uh, and it's scandalous it's really scandalous it still happens it's still happening now so I think maybe it was something to do with trying to even that that equality playing field uh, but I think it's coming around of actresses actually saying no I'm an actress and you know I, I deserve to get this salary and this figure because I'm really good at what I do mm. and yet she's one of them isn't she absolutely yeah with her very much time. so and I really admire her for that having seen her being interviewed quite a bit recently because of the movies that she's done I, I really the way she talks you know the way she comes across I really admire her mm. I think she's a kind of really feisty interesting ballsy young actress I think mm. she's great mm. I love her 
and uh, t- uh, talking more about this equality playing field, mm. there's been quite a lot recently, um, and I think for quite a while, that drama schools and that the industry itself is becoming very upper class, it's very white, it's very yeah. privileged. Um, I know Michael Early, who is our principal, wrote a letter uh, in the stage this week, which I will put um, uh, in this post for yeah. you. Yeah, I did. What do you make of all that? I think we're still really struggling with it. I think we still are. And um, I think Michael's letter was very much in response to what's been happening in America, the fact that there were no black nominees for the awards. Scandalous. I mean, if you think of the amazing films that have been produced, Mm. no black actors in there at all. I don't think we're doing enough. I don't think any, any of us are doing enough to promote, encourage black actors. Um, either at drama school or beyond. I think there is a big, regardless of what one thinks about fees and and government grants, and it's an equal playing field for everyone because now you, you know, you don't have to pay it back for twenty five years, and even then you probably won't because you know all that malarkey about all that stuff. But it isn't. I think it is. I think if you look look around at each of our courses, you're lucky to find. You won't even find ten percent of our each cohort of of black or ethnic uh, ethnic minority. You won't. And why is that? Is it just because they're not around and they're not there, or is it a cultural thing, or is it just because a lot of kids, young people, don't feel that it's for them? They don't feel that they're going to be able to achieve or support themselves or survive. Um, even though we know that the, the black actors that we've had coming through here have actually gone on to be very successful indeed. We've had a lot of incredibly successful yeah. black actors. We've got Kelly Best. We've got, you know, lots and lots have come through from very, very, actually, I would say, I think, you know, quite a lot from really quite tough, very disadvantaged backgrounds financially, you know. Um, if we do the statistics, we've got them here. We do them all the time. You know, our black actors coming in are, are generally socially disadvantaged financially. A lot, most of them are coming from one-parent families. That's really tough. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I don't think we're doing nearly enough. I think we need to do a lot more in terms of uh, our... We do a lot here at Rosebury, but I think we can do even more in terms of our outreach work, which we're doing through TYA and we're doing through lots of other means. But we need to get out there and do a lot more work with people and say, okay, yes, you can do this. Yes, this is for you. Cool. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, back to Bruford yes. and, and the foundation course. I've had lots of lovely messages from lots of people that want to apply to Bruford and to the a foundation ah, course. Oh, really? Um, oh, fabulous. This is your chance to pitch it. Pitch the foundation pitch course. It. Get everybody to apply. Fantastic. <laughs> well, you have to come and help me then. Okay. 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 Right. Where did it start? Because this we're the second year that have done it, second aren't we? Second year ever. Mm. It's, so it started... Last year. First Started year. last year, 2014. Why? In response to the fact that having looked at each cohort coming in, a large majority of our first years in on our acting, acting BA and other courses had done foundation courses. Okay. And we didn't provide one. And we thought that that was uh, an area that we need to look at because increasingly there was a need for mainly young people but not uh, not entirely to be able to have a foundation have some skills have some tools have some time in order to feel more prepared to progress on to mm. further higher training conservatoire whatever education so that was the first step um very much came from neve dowling he's our head of school who is wonderful who is an extraordinary yes. wonderful woman and said listen we're not we're not doing this and we need to look into it. So a lot of research was done. Um, uh, I uh, was working with the actor and actor musician courses at the time, looking after all their prof prep in their third years. Um, and, um, and I felt also increasingly that a lot of our first years, all the people that were not successful, mm. and I'm doing that in inverted commas. <laughs> yes, you are. Successful was not because they weren't talented they just weren't ready they just weren't ready they weren't quite in their bodies they were very self-conscious they were very anxious they were just not ready and we just thought we kept saying to people 
please come back and apply again. Please come back next year. You're not ready this year. And I know that was incredibly frustrating because a lot of applicants hear this all the time. And we thought, no, we need to do more to do this bridge between what we're doing from, you know, 17, 18 to, to provide something for people who wanted to find out, A, whether they wanted to do this because it is a huge commitment mm. in terms of emotionally, financially. It's a massive commitment through your training. Um, do you want to do it and to provide something that would give people a taster of what it would be like in a drama school, in this one, with the same contact, with the same sort of classes and teachers? Um, so that was really important. Sort of try before you buy thing. Yeah. Also to people who hadn't made it the first time necessarily, to give them some support and help to feel more confident to be able to go and try again if that's what they really wanted to do. So to give them the skills and the tools to go and audition. And also increasingly for me, for people who had already had some sort of experience, maybe had done a first degree in English or whatever, but had no skills, had no technical tools or skills. They'd done a lot of academic work, but not practice based work. For them, and also people who had maybe already been going around the edges of doing a little bit of acting here and there, but hadn't really had any formal training, or had come back to it, or had been working, doing something else, but wanted to do an intensive course, but absolutely couldn't see themselves doing three years. Okay. So really, it's to cover those, all of those bases for me, which is why it's really important for people to try before you buy, to gain experience and confidence and tools and also to consolidate existing training or experience. Awesome, okay, cool. And let's see, we, we, we are rocketing through these questions. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Do you think that the construction of the foundation course, and because obviously it's a very personal thing to you, how you've kind of put it all together, yeah. and it really, really shows that, and that's lovely. Do you think that that was influenced by your experience of training back in the day, you know, when you were at um, Arts Ed and, what what happened to you there that kind of influenced how you now want to train people this time around? Wow, that's a good question. The first uh, thing that pops into my head is when I went to drama school, they weren't degrees. Okay. So we went to drama school and you got a diploma in acting. There was no such thing as a degree in acting. So all drama schools. But because it was seen as an elitist middle class, upper middle yeah. class, whatever, uh, we all got grants from our local authorities to go to drama school. They all started to disappear. And so all drama schools had to look about and go, how do we provide this and make it accessible for people? Which is why everyone started to draw down higher education funding and provided degree based. So the same conservatoire training, but within an academic environment so you're doing two things mm -hmm. um so i guess um myself and all of my colleagues we trained under that system so all of my colleagues you know have trained at rada and central and arts ed and lambda and mount view and all sorts well, none of us had a degree so we weren't we were required to practice and make mistakes and work very hard but we didn't have it within the parameters and the confines of marking, marking criteria or assessment. It was just feedback all the time. So I, that's one of the biggest influences is I think that, um, I think there needs to be, there need to be courses, either foundation or intensive or advanced uh, courses that provide training that has nothing to do with assessment, um, which is just is practice based training. That's it. So I think I'm very influenced by that. I think I wanted I'm very keen that and it's uh, that this is not a foundation degree, that it's a foundation or an intensive. It may end up being an intensive course as well. Who knows? But, you know, an intensive course or a foundation course that is just about people giving themselves permission to come to learn, to fail, to try, to play, to experience, an experiential based course that doesn't have assessment marking attached to it. Because I think marking and assessment is, and I think all my colleagues would agree, very, very challenging for creative training. 
Okay, cool. Now, congratulations are in order for your mother, who, uh, oh. just in case um, any of you don't know. Oh, thank you. A Pat's mum is Dame? Dame Sean Dame Phillips. Dame Sean Phillips. So yes. we're messing her around. We're all going to come to the palace, all 26 oh, all of gonna, us. Just gonna we're all just going to come along. Yeah. Oh, fabulous. We can do a dance for her. It'd be great. Oh, great. Can you wear hats? Then? Sure, yeah. Really so, <laughs> Presumably that's, that's a really, really proud moment for uh, you guys. Yeah. What are some of the proudest or kind of professional highlights for you in your career do you think so far Ooh, hmm. probably um honestly I don't think the highlights for me are necessarily career-based okay uh um I've been very proud of a lot of the things that I've done but I wouldn't put them I wouldn't mark them as being kind of career highlights I've had a very meandery mm -hmm. I don't actually call it a career is that wrong no, no, I don't call it wrong. a career um I call it a I'm really actually not sure what I'm going to totally do when I grow up so I may just <laughs> meander about a bit more for the next 20 years because I have moved around a lot I don't kind of see them as career highlights I think for me um I having my daughter was a highlight I think I put that above anything um just in terms of incredibly important things that have happened to me in my lifetime so I think I would say honestly if I was to choose between a you know a play or something and and her there's no there's no competition no brainer no but in terms of my mum you know I mean, what an extraordinary career, and you know, and she's just that she's lit. She started work at the National this morning, and she's eighty three this year. So it, it, she's an extraordinary. What's she doing at the National? Do you, can't remember. Oh, you see, that's what happens. <sighs> Text her and ask. <laughs> I have asked her a number of times. You can't ask her again. No, I'm gonna have to look it up. I tell you what, I'll Google it when we finish, and then I'll. You take can send it. it to me. Okay. Yeah, and then you can know. I can't remember. It's because it's it's quite a small play. It's it's quite unknown, so it's not one that you go, oh, it's the Cherry Orchard, or oh, it's the Master Builder, or oh, it's not one of those. So it doesn't stick in my head because I have no reference for it. Mm. But you know how how amazing is that? So amazing. So amazing, and she deserves it. She's an extraordinary, extraordinary actress. Who's never taken a day off work in her life? Bless her. Oh. An extraordinary actress with an extraordinary daughter. Oh no, come on. Totally sucking up sucking up to you. Sucking. Um right. Yeah. Two more. Yeah, yeah. Well yeah. okay, two more. Advice to you You give us a lot of advice all the time and we yeah. love it. Yeah. What advice would would you give to yourself at our age? Kind of twenty. What did a 20 a year old pat not know that you wish she did oh wow loads um i think uh the the thing i say to you guys a lot i think we all say to you guys which i really wish somebody had said to me an awful lot more when i was 20 was that you just you are good enough you know you you have everything that you need really right here and now and the rest of the stuff you'll learn as you go on but the core the basis of who you are it has to be good enough you know whether you're a teacher or I mean your career or as a mother or whatever you're just good enough you're good enough and I think I think um possibly at 20 I just felt that there was so I was so there was so much I didn't know and that I needed to keep and I've done it all my life actually I'm a perpetual student so I'm always going on courses and learning stuff because I love it I remember nothing about it but I love <laughs> it so I think I must absorb some of it but I think that's what I would say you're good enough you're good enough you know learn stuff be open make mistakes but it's okay it all works out okay in the end not that I'm at the end but you know what I mean Okay, brilliant, thank you. And the final question, the one that was asked more than any any other, okay, and I, I am under order that I must ask you. Okay. Of all the students on the foundation course, who is your favourite? Everyone. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> everyone, everyone is my favourite all the time. You're so diplomatic. 
my favourite, absolutely, everyone. I think you guys are fabulous. But what's interesting, I thought you were going to say something about, oh, in comparison with last year and this year and... Oh, we know no. that we're way better than them, it's oh, fine. <laughs> but what's really interesting is that every single person, okay, there's... Is it different to yeah, last year? Totally. Really, why? Entirely, because you're different human beings. And different human beings create a different energy and a different intention and you guys, you know, ask for different things, you approach things in different ways. Those guys did, you know, it's completely, it's really, really, really different. Completely different. And that's what makes it really interesting because you never get, you never ever get the same two people in the door, ever. And that's fantastic. So you've all got to be my favorite, don't you? Mm, you're not happy out. with it no <laughs> yeah, that's as far as i'm going to say i'm not it was I worth can't. a try it, it was, was worth a try go, well done <laughs> points for trying yes yes points which makes me a favorite so yeah wonderful oh because so, you are there you go exactly yes if you hadn't said me i'd have edited it out so yeah it just matter. said it's you anyway <laughs> my blog my edit um <laughs> Thank you so much for this. So thank welcome. you. Um, thank you very much for listening. Pat, you have taught us so much over the last few months, more than you will ever know. And as anyone hoping to get into this industry knows, the first thing that you need is not skill at acting, but love of it and love of theatre. And that's what you've given us more than anything else. And oh, we, are, right. we are forever indebted to you for that. So thank you. Um, thank you for agreeing to be interrogated by me one lunchtime um, thank you all very much for listening um, keep an eye out um, over the next few weeks uh, I want to um, introduce you to more and more of my friends and, and um, everybody here at Bruford with videos and guest editors and all sorts so do keep an eye out um, thank you very much for listening um, and I will catch up with you later bye <laughs>